So Russia's fighting back and they are punishing the West with higher oil prices. We know the G7, they have been hitting Russia with a ton of sanctions and the most recent price cap on oil products was the last straw. Now Putin, he has had enough and he's reversing the tables by cutting oil production. So just yesterday, Russia announced a shocking supply cut, telling the world they are reducing their oil production by 500,000 barrels a day in March. Now Putin has said time and time again, he will cut production if the West keeps sanctioning his oil and now he has delivered on his promise. Now Russia's sudden move to cut oil production is a strategic one. They have timed it well because the world is already on the precipice of a recession. And this move clearly telegraphs two things, right? Now one, Russia's playing their trump card. They know the world still needs Russian oil and cutting production now will increase inflation. And two, Russia's willing to push the West into a recession to bring them back to the negotiating table, right? He knows from recent events that money and weapons are going to keep flowing into Ukraine and the sanctions from the G7 are also not going to stop. So this supply cut is likely a Russian counter-offensive on the financial front. And let's understand the strategies between the West and Russia. Now the collective West is trying to bleed Russian revenues dry. All the tanks they are sending Zelensky, all the sanctions being slapped on Russia are to try and bankrupt Putin, right? They want him to be financially unable to continue the war and raise the right flag. Now, Russia's plan is to ramp up energy inflation and increase deficit spending by the West. He wants them to dig themselves further into debt by printing money to subsidize energy prices and to finance Ukraine's war spending, right? And by cutting oil production now, Putin is making a gamble that the inflation pain will reach a point where central banks have to keep hiking rates up. He wants a resurgence of inflation in the West so that the Federal Reserve and the ECB hikes rates further, pushing the economy off a cliff. Now, we already have major central banks around the world, especially in the G7, hiking rates non-stop since the middle of last year. Now, the Fed funds rate has gone from near zero to almost 5% in less than a year. The ECB's benchmark rate went from negative to 2.5% and the Bank of England has hiked 10 times to 4%. And it's really a miracle that the economy is still standing today. And by ramping up inflation in the West, Putin is trying to end the war by winning the battle on the financial front. This could be his plan to get everyone back to the negotiating table. And according to the Russian Deputy Prime Minister, Russia believes that the mechanism of price caps on Russian oil and petroleum products is an intervention in market relations and an extension of destructive energy policies of the collective West. So on the surface, Russia's production seems to be in direct response to the G7 price cap, right? They want to rebalance the market, but the real agenda might be to stoke the inflation fires once again and revive a second wave of higher energy prices. Now, Putin's cut might seem small compared to the previous OPEX cut of 2 million barrels, right? But 500,000 barrels only represents 5% of Russian oil production, so there's still room for it to escalate. Now, if we look at IMF projections, we can see that the West, especially Europe, is on the brink of a recession. The Eurozone as a whole will face only a 0.7% GDP growth this year, with the UK expected to shrink by 0.6% and Germany on the brink of a recession as well. So if Russia, they ramp up the inflation pain enough, it might be the final straw that pushes the Eurozone into a recession. Because we need to think from Russia's perspective, so far they have been fighting the war while in a recession last year, but the West was in positive GDP territory in 2022. We even have the hawkish Russian central bank warning of a deficit. They are forecasting a contraction of up to 1%, so 2023 might still be a recession for Russia. But can the West continue to keep spending to keep the fight going, especially if they enter a recession as well? Will the people in Europe and the United States change their opinion of funding Ukraine when their own economies they are contracting? And that is the trillion dollar question. And let's realize that for the Russians, timing is everything. I don't think it came as a surprise that this production cut came just after Zelensky visit to the UK asking for fighter jets and with Rishi Sunak, the PM, claiming that nothing is off the table. Now, Putin is seeing this escalation in war spending and armaments. He is seeing Zelensky demanding wings for freedom and even France isn't ruling out the idea just yet. So put yourself in Russia's shoes. 
you are facing an endless wave of advanced weapons coming from the West. First, it was battle tanks, and now it might be fighter jets. It won't be a surprise if the price cuts were also a retaliation to Ukraine's new demands for weapons. Now, things are really getting from bad to worse, and now we have escalations in the oil market at a time when the economy is on the brink of falling over. So you might be wondering also, what about India and China? Wouldn't supply cuts also squeeze Asia and slow down the recovery there? Now, yes and no. In nominal terms, if Russia cuts their oil production, the global price of oil will increase, right? But they've already been selling oil at 30 or even 40% discount to India and China. But there's also another fair question we have to ask. Could Russia even ship their oil to them? Well, Putin has amassed a huge shadow fleet of over 600 ships to transport his cargo from Russian ports to Asia. So bypassing sanctions is still possible, even if the price of the euros goes above $60. Now, what Russia effectively is doing is still selling cheap oil to India and China compared to the rest of the world. One price for the BRICS nations, another price for the West. And cheap Russian oil is building up the Asian economy while the West has to pay higher prices on the open market for their energy, right? And this is going to drag down their economy, especially Germany. And according to reports, Russia is about to reprice their oil. The euros at minus $20 to Brent crude. So with Brent at $86 today, Russia might be selling their oil above the price cap now. And if we look back, Germany's strong GDP growth in the past was a function of cheap Russian energy. According to Credit Suisse, we can see that $2 trillion of German manufacturing value actually depended on $20 billion of Russian energy inputs. So if those inputs are suddenly denied to the Eurozone and transferred to India and China, they will grow faster than the rest of the world. Russia essentially is subsidizing their growth. And Russia knows that the Western sanctions have their limits and we only need to look at what happened a week ago, right? Remember when a Ukrainian lawmaker demanded the US to sanction India and China for buying Russian oil? Well, that didn't really work. Even the US came out saying that they are not looking to sanction India. Russia's customers are also not going to abandon them. We have India's National Security Advisor Ajit Dovell meeting Putin himself to discuss bilateral trade and agreeing to work towards a stronger India-Russia strategic partnership. And the world is starting to split into separate blocks, especially when it comes to energy, oil and gas, right? Russian oil is still going to flow because you cannot sanction the whole world. And speaking of different factions, guys, the world's biggest producers, OPEC Plus, isn't planning to do anything even after Russia's oil cuts. In other words, Saudi Arabia and the Middle East aren't coming to save the world. They are not going to pump more oil to bring down higher energy prices because essentially what Russia did is good business for them. Higher prices means they get to earn more for selling less. And if we look deeper into Saudi's oil sales, they are the biggest supplier of crude to China and the second biggest supplier to India. So even if the West slips into a recession, the majority of oil sales are in long-term contracts to countries in Asia. Even the United States no longer buys the bulk of their oil from the Persian Gulf or OPEC. And we can see that over time, Canada is now America's biggest supplier and supply from the Middle East has essentially created. So OPEC doesn't really care, guys. They don't need to ramp up production because their revenue streams are secured. The West is left alone to deal with this inflationary shock if oil price really spikes up. And the only tool they have left is to hide interest rates to cause more demand destruction, right? When all you have is a hammer, everything else looks like a nail. It's the same playbook they used back last year when you raise interest rates to make everyone poorer so that demand for oil all goes down, right? They don't control the majority of the world's physical oil, so they can only use financial instruments to affect the demand side. And I think we are moving towards a new oil order where there will be new centers of power and it will revolve around who controls the oil. Countries with oil will be able to dictate the price of oil and they can sell cheap energy to whoever they want to. Discount for my friends and a higher price for the rest of the world. So just imagine the world split into three oil powers, right? Three oil blocks. The first will be the trifecta of Russia, India, and China. The second will be the NATO bloc, the Western countries. And the final group will be the OPEC bloc, or what I like to call them, the big wild card, the swing voters. And it's likely even after the war ends, 
Russia is going to concentrate supplies to Asia, especially steel to China and India. And on the NATO side, Canada and the US will be the oil barons in the West, with Norway being the main supplier to the EU. Now, OPEC and the Middle East will simply sell their oil to everyone for the best price. And we can see the shift of power slowly drift away from the West towards the East, especially with Saudi Arabia, MBS, looking to join BRICS. So we have to understand how the globalization is really playing out in the oil markets. This is a direct consequence of the sanctions and the price cap. And I believe the production cut is much more than just Russia trying to protect their oil revenues, right? Putin is trying to test the water and swing public perception towards the negotiating table. Yes, Russia might have the stomach for the long game, but this state of affairs obviously can't go on forever, right? Now, this isn't the first time that Russia used energy to ramp up inflation in the West, especially in Europe. Yes, been done before. Back in September last year, Putin turned off Russian gas to the EU as winter was approaching. It was essentially a gamble to let them freeze during winter for discussing a price cap. But it turned out that Europe stockpiled enough gas and winter was rather mild enough, so Putin's gamble didn't really work. Whether oil cut is truly about protecting revenues or bringing up the inflation pain, these can't come at the worst time, right? We know companies are laying off people, especially in the tech sector. Over 600 technology companies alone in 2022 announced mass layoffs. We also have big banks like Morgan Stanley calling for an earnings recession, and this might just be enough to collapse the markets. So far, the battle has been fought in a positive GDP environment for the West. Yes, I know inflation went above 9% in June last year, but people still had jobs and people were still spending. But what if unemployment spikes up, right? What if the stock market crashes and inflation ramps up again? Will the West be able to justify their spending to aid Ukraine? Will they print money to save their own economy or to save Ukraine? Because doing both will be rather hard to explain. Now, Russia has been used to fighting in a recession, but the West might not have the stomach to fight during one, right? So all this talk of a soft landing or the world dodging a recession might be premature and we might have to prepare for the absolute worst. I think we need to realize that the economy is still on the edge and Russia's oil cut is not helping things. Everyone is talking about peak inflation and disinflation, but this production cut has really thrown a spanner into the works. We really don't know what else Putin has in store for us. Is another black swan event coming in 2023? Now we have China about to make a historic visit to Russia a year after the Ukraine conflict started and I can imagine their agenda to be longer than Santa's wish list. Their foreign minister has already visited Lavrov in Moscow earlier this week so a meeting between Xi and Putin is going to happen, most likely going to happen and there's still the issue of admitting new BRICS members. Are they going to talk about the BRICS currency as well or is the agenda going to be about oil and gas? And we need to watch this carefully because if China's reopening isn't affected and they can still get cheap oil from Russia, then we can expect Putin to ramp up the inflation pain further. 2023 could be shaping up to be even worse than the disaster in 2022. So let me know what you think, guys. Will Russia continue to cut oil production? Will Putin's oil cuts work or will it backfire on him? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.